Committees. This proposal was submitted by two authors, Georgi Pallet and Fernando Frediani. I invite you to come up in order to make your presentation. Welcome. Let me remind you that you have 10 minutes to make your presentation. So can we have the slides? Good morning. I'm Fernando Ferdiani. Together with my colleague, Jordi Pellet, we are submitting this proposal in order to clarify, to better clarify, that resource leasing is not accepted in the current policies. So to start, let me make a brief summary. The slides are in Spanish to facilitate the understanding of the Spanish speakers, but I will be making my presentation in Portuguese because a large number of the participants speak Portuguese. The current LACNIC policies do not consider address leasing acceptable. This is not allowed by the policies if those IPs are not part of a connectivity service. So when an organization receives an IP address block, they should justify that they will be using this block for their own infrastructure or to connect their clients. If there is no connectivity service, the IPs cannot be used for other purposes, for example, for leasing. That is why this is currently not allowed. This proposal then explicitly highlights this aspect. I already spoke with many people who still have doubts as to whether this is allowed or not at LACNIC, and even clarifying the this doubts remain. So we prepared this proposal to clarify this. This is clear because if someone here is in favor of leasing IP addresses, I would like to ask them to please not to oppose this proposal if you're in favor of leasing IP addresses. It's just to clarify something that exists. If you are in favor of leasing IP, you have to submit a new proposal. So I would like to listen to arguments on this proposal that might be a problem for this proposal. The RIRs and the NIRs were conceived to manage, distribute, and assign resources. This is a neutral entity that has been exist in existence for many years. There's an entire ecosystem. So in order to take this justification in a neutral way, applying the current we have to apply the current policies. That is why the IP assignments are not an asset to be negotiated and to be leased out, as was mentioned previously in the panel. And let me add that many speak about free markets and about and my question then is how can you use this? Who wishes to lease IP addresses, and they want to do so with something that does not belong to them. You cannot do business with something that doesn't belong to you. So that is why we have the RIR system to receive the justification with neutrality and to guarantee that business is not done with something that does not belong to you. So any form of leasing leads to losing the link between who owns the block and who uses the block. So this might be like an abuse if you do leasing. Then this is more difficult if the person who owns the block applies a filter and disconnects the organization that's using it. So in order to clarify everything regarding the current situation, we have at LACNIC that IP address assignments should not be leased. They need to have a connectivity service that is linked 
to that. So this is according to the policy manual. I don't see the stopwatch. How much time do I have left? So the proposed text eliminates two sections of the policy manual, and this is consolidated in just one. I will show you the new wording and the new proposal, but it still states that the IP addresses are not a property. Uh, another point that was mentioned in the previous version is that we're not reassessing or the justification already stated initially to receive an IP block. This is only done if LACNIC suspects that it is necessary to request an additional justification to that entity. So that is not the spirit. The proposed text eliminates section 2.3.2.1, as you see here on the slide. I'll have to speed up but maybe you read this already. So it also eliminates this other section for 3.1. And the new text is consolidated in section 1.2.1. The new text appears in blue. What you see in black is what we already had. I'm going to read out the new text so you can understand the intention. We state that Internet resources are delegated and don't belong to any organization or person. The justification of the need in the current policies generically in the case of assignments implies the need for having their own infrastructure or to connect clients directly. Therefore, it is not considered acceptable, nor does it justify the need of any leasing modality or IP uh, to be used without economic compensation or of any other type if these are not part of the connectivity or a set of services based unless this has been justified originally. What uh, is it that this proposal is not? It's not a definition of a leasing or connectivity. It's just to clarify an existing situation. It's not a change in policy about what is valid as a rational, what is valid as a rational continues to be valid as a LACNIC uh, as requested uh, to the organizations for justification, nor is it a change with respect to the concept of non-property or a renewal of license. What is this proposal? A clarification of the existing policy, clarification about how LACNIC can act based on uh, the current policy, and also that LACNIC can revisit the use and not renew a license of use of IP addresses. I don't know whether you know it, but LACNIC may request a new uh, justification of an organization that already has an IP and uh, to check if and uh, if it's if if it's not consistent with the current policy, it can be revoked. Additional information: uh, this same proposal, a similar proposal, was presented in the other IRRs, in Arin and APNIC. It was uh, debated. Uh, Along in RIPE, they didn't uh, mention it, uh, but uh, nor do they accept uh, just an original justification of the need. In APNIC and EFRINIC, uh, the staff has confirmed that they do not consider it licit to lease uh, addresses. In ARIN, uh, the lease is not a justification for need. So. Um, as we, we are not going to do an impact analysis of version 3, I'm just going to uh, discuss uh, the items that were changed uh, in. Uh, I'm, I'm only going to mention the, the impact analysis of the previous version. There, it, uh, they, did, they thought uh, that, it, that the, the, this, uh, uh, the approval of this proposal as reducted generates a high impact in the operations of over 12,000 uh, uh, members of LACNIC. Uh, and the proposal does not uh, 
So we adjusted the text to clarify it. The second thing that was mentioned in the impact analysis was the justification may change as time goes by. So if it was justified uh, some time ago that an IP block was going to be assigned uh, to ADCL, ADSL, and then it is given for a different reason, there's no need for justification. Now, if the purpose of the company changed and there are blocks that are not being used, it's not correct to lease them only because they are idle to make money out of it. The noblest thing, the most correct, is to return them because there's a possibility of transfer. So that is the item. There are no problems for justifications to be changed as long as it continues to be valid. Third, a lot was said about direct connectivity. It's uh, the cut. It's. The indirect connectivity is um, the clients connected to the network, but not from uh, the one that received the license of use of LACNIC. So if there is a provider in Sao Paulo that is not using the IP addresses and, and uh, leases it to somebody else in the Northeast, but they have no virtual connectivity, uh, um, not no physical connectivity, virtual is also possible, but there needs to be, uh, they have to give services because if not, it's only leasing and it is not included in the original justification that is connecting their clients. Fourth and final, in the impact analysis, we mentioned the end users. The policy does. Uh, not to make it possible to uh, for an end user to attribute uh, what they want to do any client because the end user is only for their own usage. So we believe we discussed all uh, the items in the impact analysis and here with this I'm open to questions together with my colleague Jordi. Thank you, Fernando. Let me clarify that this proposal, this version, does not have an impact analysis. What we've seen so far is the impact analysis of the previous version. I just wanted to clarify that. As so, as it has no impact analysis, we are going to start the discussion, as we mentioned earlier. The room has two microphones in the central aisle, and those of you connected via Zoom, you have the Q&A panel, or you can request the floor if you wish, and Franco will recognize you. Um, each, for each question, you have two minutes to ask a question, and the other will have two minutes to answer it. So we remind those that ask the question that we have simultaneous translation, so please speak slowly and using your native language. Please also uh, give us your name, your organization, and whether you're in favor or against. And if you're against, explain why. Good morning, Wesley Correa. Uh, uh, I, I apologize because I, I'm not speaking my mother language, but I'm no longer working in Brazil, so I feel free to speak Spanish. I don't have any stance. Uh, I don't know whether I'm against or in favor, so I want to clarify some things and ask some things. I didn't really understand what the problem is. What is the problem that you're trying to, to solve with that? Uh, uh, if there's already an understanding that the leasing is not allowed, I don't understand what the real problem is. What do you try to solve? I fully understand and I agree that the idea would be that the resources unused come back to LACNIC so that they can be assigned again. However, I this week 
and in previous weeks, I conducted a small survey and everybody I asked said that in no case would they return it. And that's very simple. So even if you police the internet, investigating the resources that are unused, it would be just like uh, using a magnifying glass and you would see blocks that are not being used. And in addition, I saw, I, I was thinking of something very uh, interesting, that you can't establish commercial relations with something that is not your own. So, please, Jordi or Fernando, could you explain what is the difference between sale? Because the transfer in the IRR exists, but in most cases it's a sales operation, and of course it includes a sale. Thank you, Leslie. It's very easy to solve this problem. There are doubts, there are people that are leasing with the feeling that well, they, they have doubt. So this wants to clarify this so that people will have no doubt and people won't continue to violate the policy. That's the only reason. As to the transfers and business, a very important issue there, when you transfer for NIC BR, NIC Mexico, whatever, it doesn't matter whether there was a financial transfer transaction. The important thing is that it is justified based on the policy that you need to connect clients. So that is very important to be consistent with the policy and meeting a need. That's a holy thing. If not, you you come up with you, you won't go with a contract of LACNIC. And the third item there was a third item, Wesley. Just to clarify part of your first item, which the policy manual or the proposals to the policy manual in the PDP, not always do they need to solve problems. Sometimes there's no problem. Sometimes it's not clear enough. People don't understand it. That's why we put their clarification, because the proposal is not trying to change anything substantially. We just want to make sure that readers will understand it perfectly. And we have texts in the IPv4 text parts in and, and text in the IPv6 part that should say exactly the same. And they do say the same, but they are drafted different. So we unify it. So we take it to general norms. Franco, I don't know whether we have any. Hernan Seoane of Cavasi. I have a comment. As we saw in this morning's panel, the community is starting the debate on this. And my view from Cavasi is that we are not ripe enough. We have to continue the discussion and to mature it with the community. Thank you. I think that we are talking of two different things. Here we are clarifying existing text and we highlighted this today is not contemplated. If the community thinks, and I said it in my last presentation, if the community thinks that we have to do uh, to, to lease, we need a proposal saying that we can do lease. So the, the question is to lease or not to lease. And I've done it other times. If I see that the general feeling is that we should accept leasing, I will be the first to support it. I didn't use to support transfers, and I was the first one to say, let's work with transfers. So we are not here to defend our personal uh, stances, but what is better for the community. And uh, at present, I don't think there's a, a, it's clear, regardless of what is being done in other regions. Now, what I clearly understand is that we have to plan what the current situation is. 
Hernán García of the Plan Argentina. I am against the proposal, but I partially agree with what you say. The truth is the part I, I agree with you is that we have to um, we, we would have there's a timing issue. I think many of us are still ripening this topic. We're ruminating it because there are things I, I chaired the panel. There are things that were said in the panel that I don't agree. Monetization and put the market over other things. It, that I don't see that a good thing, but I see a problem. And I see a problem of small operators who want to join and they may find difficulties. So as we can't give them a solution, they found the way to solve it. So I think that we need to work for this to be if the lease is the response. I understand that this uh, is uh, an expression, but I think that it is against discussions. It, uh, I understand the spirit uh, the, that the, it, this was presented with, but I think that rather than clarifying, it makes uh, the dialogue even murkier. I'm against it. Thank you. This doesn't. This issue of leasing IP addresses is another point. Now, I would like to understand the problem that you see in the proposed text so that we can correct it. So if you find a proposal, if you are against this proposal, then what I would like to really understand is in order to improve the wording in the new version. So good afternoon, Gonzalo Navarra. Thank you for the opportunity of interacting. And I state that I'm against the proposal. I have a couple of questions and a couple of comments. The question is, I still am not so clear about this. And from the legal point of view, if you allow transfers, which implies leave, uh, releasing an IP block, why cannot you lease this, which is somehow less? This remains being the property. Secondly, I agree with the two Hernanes who spoke before me. So we're only beginning the debate, and you yourself stated this. It took five years to take this topic to APNIC. And the panel we had this morning is was the very first opportunity that we had as a community to understand, to discuss, and to express our points of view. There was a most rich interaction and discussion from the floor. Many ideas and very interesting ideas were expressed. So even when this is about clarifying things, I think it is incorrect to kill the option of discussing this without the community having sufficient time to ruminate on this topic, where well, I think that this implies. Let me precise, be precise about one of the points in the proposal. You refer to the fact that transfers are not allowed. So unfortunately, as a lawyer, I must state that one thing is uh, to assign these to give. I'm against the proposal, but this implies that you are killing transfers. I think that is a misinterpretation. We might be discussing contradictory proposal, but this proposal is to reaffirm what we have in the manual. This does not imply that tomorrow, tonight, we might even sit down together to support leasing. These are different proposals. One is classification, and something different is to see what we want to do. Let me give you an example now. What you're saying about transfers, why do you allow to transfer and not um, leasing? And in RIPE, 
temporary transfers are also allowed. So this could be something equivalent to this. So to tell the truth, I think no proposal gives another proposal. We can perfectly well work in parallel. Hello, I'm Douglas Fisher. I oppose this proposal for more than one reason. The first reason is that for sure there will be, you might recall, other events we had on public policy forums where an argument to justify a vote against a proposal was stated. And we said, well, we already spoke about this and we shouldn't touch upon this topic once again. Now, it occurs that eventually if this proposal is approved, it will then generate the impression that we shouldn't go back to that topic. I know that nothing prevents us from going back to a topic that was already discussed, but somehow it will lead to having that impression that we shouldn't be touching upon that top topic frequently. So I don't think there will be anyone in this room who disagrees with the fact that this topic has to be discussed much more. So when approving a proposal like this, we're going to be generating a sort of a darkness, and I oppose that. That's why I disagree. Secondly, your arguments state that this would only be for the purpose of clarification of the text, but this includes words and it includes expressions that are not included in the policy manual. For example, it is not ownership. Well, not in that context, I, I mean. So what I see is that depending on the way it is stated, more than clarifying this, this is like uh, might enclose other things. So, Douglas Fisher, I still don't quite understand what the point is, what the new text might giving rise to. I see that there is a real problem now that there might be violations of the policy manual because there are people who are leasing IPs that are registered in the LACNIC region and they're leasing this where this is not possible. So this affects the entire community. So. In this proposal, when we are reaffirming what already exists, what is the damage? What is the part of the text that we can adjust so as not to further have an impact? This we're not going to inhibit any form of discussion. We understand there might be fears, but our proposal does not expect to avoid any kind of discussion or limit any form of discussion. So those who are concerned about that, don't be afraid of that because you'll be able to continue your discussions. And that has been quite clarified. I think this will then lead to another problem. And this is the main argument. It will generate the will of not continuing to with a will to discuss this topic. So we're not at a stage and we can bring a definition on this topic. And if there is a non-compliance, well, why do so? Why touch upon this? So if you define that this has been violated, why touch upon this again? Yes, uh, Nico, you have the floor. I'm Nicola Santoniello. I speak on a strictly personal nature and just want to make a comment regarding a personal interpretation of some of the points included in this proposal. I think that we must not forget when we prepare policies We lost the microphone.
All right. I will continue. So it's difficult after all this bullying I received. <laughs> So going back to the topic, this is a multi-stakeholder model. So one of the roles of this registry is the last R registry. So when proposals are submitted, we always should bear that in mind. It should be written somewhere that the preserving the role of the registry is one of the main goals of this policy manual. So this proposal describes some terms such as ownership, license, and it explicitly states that IP addresses are not property. And they state that this is for the purpose of clarification. And this is not clarification if you introduce terms that are not there. And if they are there, you didn't need to introduce this at all, because this is sort of a redundancy. A re uh, repeating some things. I have to be very cautious. When we explicitly used certain types of terms, we have to consider whether these terms are applicable to that type of model. Nicolas, those terms are contained in the manual today in section 2321 and in section 431. One is section 9 IPv4 and one is section 9 IPv6. But these have been duplicated and using different terms stating the same thing. So you don't need to read everything, but it is there. So we're not defining these terms. We're not adding terms, but instead of being contained in the IPv4 or IPv6 sections, in addition to the fact there is nothing in the ASN section, we are putting including this in the section on definitions or standards, I don't quite recall. This is something we have done in the past. The idea is to sort of organize the manual better. The concept of property is not being defined and we're not changing it. And the same thing applies to IPv4, IPv6, and to ASNs, but ASN is not subject to this concept at present. We're almost finished. We invite you to carry on with the discussion in the policy discussion list. We'd like to thank the authors. And now we will measure the temperature in the room in order to take this into account when determining consensus. A round of applause. So now let us ask LACNIC staff to assist us. Let me remind you that even though the Zoom tool states that you have to vote, this is not voting, but we're just measuring the temperature in the room. The result of this poll does not indicate that a proposal is then passed on to consensus. Consensus is assessed based on the comments made by the forum and by the mailing list. This should not be considered at all as a voting process. For those who are participating in person in the room, LACNIC staff will now count the number of hands. Please let me know when you're ready. So raise your hand, please, those who are in favor of this proposal. Keep your hand raised, please. Thank you. Now, raise your hand if you are against this proposal. And keep your hand raised, please. Thank you. Now raise your hand if you abstain.
Thank you. Ready? Proposal LAC 2022 2 version 3 clarification resource leasing is not accepted in the current policies, finishes its eight weeks of discussion on November 13th, 2023. As from that date and in the two-week period, moderators, the chairs, will communicate to the community if this proposal reaches consensus. We now invite you to continue the discussion in the policy discussion list. So this is the end of the first session on the public policy forum. We'll continue with the proposals after lunch. Prior to that, we'd like to invite Jorge Villa, Ricardo Patara to come up to submit the ASO report.